Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, uh, this is just a video for anybody that has an old system that may have or had interest in purchasing Tiny Clade and um, didn't know if they could actually run it. And I'm telling you that it's possible to still run it with a system older than the specs they recommend. Um, I've got a very old computer that I use and it's my primary one because I play a lot of older games, really. I don't play a lot of new stuff, but this uh, AMD Radeon R7 has been a pretty big champ for a long time. It was a very cheap upgrade for me, and that was 10 years ago now. And it was a cheap upgrade at the time for a computer system that was already five years old, which the AMD Phenom came out in 2009. So I needed something to play some games and I went with a pretty cheap GPU at the time. And that's 10 years old now, and the system's 15 years old. And at first it would not run because it's only got one gig of memory. So that's pretty much the bare requirements, I think, that Tiny Glade can handle one gig because you'll see as I do some more stuff on here that that's pretty much maxing out this system with this game. But um, the way to get these games to play, possibly, is to go into Steam and right-click on your Tiny Glade game and go to Properties and look at the beta files there. And those are just different files that they've used for trying to troubleshoot in the past. So there are some older ones. And the most recent one won't even launch for this. And that might be why they now have the minimum requirements on this higher than what this um, system I have is, which won't play. But you can go in and do some things to try and get it to work because I saw someone online that had a similar, uh, or at least the similar video card, maybe not system, but the video card, and he couldn't play it. But I don't think he realized that you can go in and do this. Um, another thing you can do is turn off these Vulcan layers to save, because everything your processor, uh, sorry, your video processor is doing with Windows and stuff is eating up some memory, so you only have so much to use. So you want to try and get this down to bare bones what this game is requiring. Um, another thing I do is I go in and I turned on, and it might not be necessary, but I turned on uh, administrative access for the executable, just so I knew that there was nothing holding it back. So you can go into the properties of the executable file and then run it as an administrator. Maybe not necessary. Sometimes I just like doing that to make sure there's nothing getting in the way of this, getting the resources it may need on the system. So there's that. And you'll get that prompt when you go to start the game. And fortunately, with this beta version, I'm able to run it. But there's some other issues to look out for. And that's where it gets into the real nitty gritty. The, the first thing you want to do is just to get it to run. And if you can use one of these older betas and it'll at least start up, that's a good start. But you can see how grainy this is. You can't even tell what's going on. And I'm going to get into that more because, again, when I say that everything that's running on your system is using the graphics processor, that's what's happening. Um, going back in here, you can see that one of the options is to just have none. And that's just the original download you're going to get, the most current one. And going forward, I imagine none of those are going to work because it seems like that doesn't even recognize my processor. And it didn't recognize my monitor for some reason with the newer version. And that could be just one of the reasons why you'll see the error message that I'm going to get. That might be by design now. They don't want the experience to be too poor for some people even if you have an older system. So they may have finally decided to say, oh look, we're gonna at least go with higher minimum specifications, which may require having at least a two gig card. I'm not sure. I think they go with an R9 now. 
But you can see that when I go to run the most recent version, it says I've got a supported driver, um, but not enough free memory. Now, I don't know what they've changed, but you can go into the log files if you want and look at them. And if you're not sure what's going on, you can copy all this and load it into chat GPT. And a lot of times, if you ask it to explain that, it'll kind of tell you what's probably going on, where the errors are. Another thing you can do is go into this folder, that username would be yours, obviously, and you go into the Steam folder there, and you can, inside of there, find the config file. So you gotta drill down one more, and then you can see the settings.ron for TinyGlade. Now, I have Notepad++ installed because it's free, but you can open this with just your regular notepad to view the settings that are in there. Now, a lot of times this tries to start up with like a 1080p resolution, and maybe you have a card that can't handle that. So you can see here, you can change those resolutions to something different, the windowed or the full screen. Um, that resolution scale also at the top, you can drop that down to maybe one or two or three for startup and save that and see if it'll boot up because sometimes it's really just about how much memory there is. And I'll be able to show you that when I go into that in the game portion of the resolution scale. Uh, interestingly enough, when I installed this with the regular installer, it didn't even recognize the monitor. So that was all blank. So I knew something was wrong. But when I re-ran it with one of the old betas, it picked up my monitor and it picked up um, the graphics card and things like that. So I'm guessing that stuff they've removed. So that's really one of the biggest problems. And you can see here that if you need to, you can drop down these resolutions manually in the config file before it starts up, which might allow it to load because if you're peeking beyond what the memory constraints are, it's never gonna run. But if you drop down to the lowest resolution, and you might have to go down to 640 by 480 that you saw there in this last one to get it to run, I can run it actually in uh, 720. I can run it in full resolution of 1080p, but I really have to scale down the resolution mode on this so that it's kind of fuzzy. So I found the sweet spot to be about 800 by 600 or even better if you want it to be really clean, 640 by 480. But again, you're going to have a smaller window to play out of. Fortunately, I'm playing this most of the time on my CRT monitor. So a four by three resolution at 640 by 480 is fine. But you can see by getting things to run this way, you can actually get it to uh, load sometimes i'm not going to say it's going to happen all the time for everybody but these are the things you want to try beyond just trying to run the game normally um, you can see here that i'm eventually got to the 1.10.3 version which is probably the last version i'm going to be able to run and um, you can see my resolution scale is down to zero which and my my memory is 0.78 max right now and that's part of the problem was i was trying to record this and the recording software takes up more memory because I am right at the minimum, I think, requirements for running this at all. And anything else running, because you might want to turn off extra things like uh, maybe Windows enhancements and stuff like that. Uh, but right here, you can see this is not exactly gigs, but it's called a uh, gigabyte, which is just a little more accurate in testing and measuring how much memory is being used. So you can see here, I'm right now, I need 7 point or 0 0.78 and my system only has 0 0.76, which means it's gonna crash. There's not enough memory to run the game. It might load the intro screen, but you're not gonna be able to play it. So what I need to do is, first off, I'm gonna stop this and I'm gonna start recording from my iPhone. And once I record from my iPhone and I reloaded it, you can see that it's running. Now it's still at the resolution scale of not zero. So I'm gonna crank it up. And now I have 0.83 gigabytes to run off of. So I've got a little more to work with. 
And depending on the resolution I'm using, I may be able to get over one. Um, on this here, you can see that I've got it in a windowed mode on my screen so I can have it look at least widescreen. And it actually, it plays okay. I mean, it's not the best resolution. It's not the fastest frame rate, but for a game like this, you know, I've kind of been trying to get it around 30 frames per second. And I think when I look into my system, oh, so here it is when it's running. See, I started up the video software again and it totally blurs out in the background because it knows that it ran out of memory. So it dropped it right down to zero again. And um, that's because I was running the recording software. So I just wanted to show you what what it was doing. See, when I go back in now, it's gone back down to zero. And if I try and go up, because you can see now, I'm no longer at 83 for my max, I'm at 77. So that's how close this is to not running at all to begin with. So again, if it's not running, you've got to turn off all kinds of background stuff to make sure that you've got the most video processing available. So that's gonna be on at least a one gig, at the very minimum, one gig video card. So again, once turning off that, I'll get a little extra memory, which will allow me to run it in a resolution that also allows me to there's resolution and resolution in this. Like you've got your standard resolution of your screen and then you've got the resolution. See, it's recovered now. So I'm running in this widescreen format in windowed mode. And now I can play again and it recovered. Um, I think it went back up to like 0.7 or 0.8 for the scaling, the resolution scaling. Now, again, I haven't loaded a lot of content on here. I don't know if that eats away at that memory over time. That's something I'll learn later, but this is just talking about getting it to run. And you can make a small village in here and play around a little bit just to see what it's like. Again, this wasn't designed for me to run for me on this system, but I thought when I saw someone else say they couldn't run it, I'd give it a shot. Now let's switch over to my 1080p uh, TV. I'm gonna use this as a monitor because I really don't have a monitor because my CRT is in the way. So I'm gonna run this in windowed mode at 1080p for right now. And because my window, Windows resolution is higher, I'm running this in the same window resolution I was on my other monitor, but because my monitor had a lower resolution, overall, it was able to run smoother. Because you can see in here, when we go in now, the resolution scale is at seven. I'm at 0.8182. It's whatever those are. You can say giga, gigabytes, whatever you want. I'm saying bits, giga, giga bytes. But you can see that because um, the resolution's higher in the background, it's going to take a hit. So we can go into just full screen and try out some of the resolution. So 720 full screen is not bad considering that this is a really old processor and a really old graphics processor. I can still, and what I would call an acceptable frame rate for a game like this, play it. But the sweet spot I've noticed for this is 800 by 600. Or going down to 640 by 480. Uh, it's a little brighter when you're in the refresh rate of 75 hertz. And, uh, you know, you could drop that down to 60 just so it's a little, little dimmer. But you can see again, it's playing perfectly fine. And perfectly fine. I mean, and then, you know, if you're in a lower resolution that's a 4x3, you can just change your monitor settings so that the aspect ratio is normal and you just don't get, you know, a as big a panorama, but it'll perform better. And you can see it's pretty smooth in 800 by 600. So let's go back and, oh yeah, there's an image sharpening option too. That image sharpening uh, kind of makes things look a little sharper, but also a little more grainy at the same time. But there's different things you can do once you get it running to try and improve the quality a little bit. And to me, it, it kind of, makes it a little more 
stipply. I don't know if that's a good thing. Like if you had a painting and you were using stippling for painting, but you know, it performs fine and you're able to at least zoom in and see the best quality that you're getting. Um, you know, you get down low, look at the grass blades and stuff like that. You're going to see when you're going to be able to max this out. And as you can tell, if you're below the one mark in that resolution setting, that's going to be, you know, a lot softer. So another interesting resolution that you can run in widescreen is the 720 by 400. But doing that, now let's see, I think the, uh, yeah, look, I'm at 83, pretty solid dot 83. And I can crank that up over one if I wanted to. But I also have found that sometimes when you're playing around in here, if something else reacts or if you move around in a certain way it will instinctively this program will drop to a lower resolution scale not not resolution you know of the the screen but the resolution scaling that they have in it but the big key is watching that gpu how much memory is being used and how much you have because if it usually won't let you go over that but if you are at the peak of that and something else kicks in or you run something else that's going to use some of the gpu it'll crash the system sometimes it doesn't crash it sometimes it just reduces the resolution in the background like you saw before but you know it can it can play pretty good in an old system still. I mean, when they were talking about that, that it ran in pretty well in an old system, I think what they were considering was something that's probably 10 years old max uh, for processors and maybe not so old for a video card. But you can see you could even do things in, in a pretty widescreen format if you're using a window on a modern screen and still make it look good so there's all the options you guys have and hopefully this helps somebody if not you know just know that it's a pretty neat game it's just kind of a casual builder and a very relaxed game and there's some troubleshooting options if you bought it and you can't get it to run at all so good luck to all of you we'll see you next time so long